Let me get into this because it's 4th of July. I know somebody already has a brisket in the smoker and I need your address. You didn't call me. <laughs> you know, people have a problem with all these holidays now. You know, that's the black day, the, the, the Juneteenth, oh, that's the white. They got all their problems, but none of them have a problem taking off work. I don't care what color I am, bro. <laughs> What's this? This is a Scottish holiday. Oh, hey, can I get off work? <laughs> That's all I care about. I don't even know what the holiday is about. So if you white, you take Juneteenth off. <laughs> you don't have to know why, just take it off. Because <laughs> we sure take that. Uh, you know. But anyway! Our Independence Day, this is what we're going to talk about today, adamantbeliever.com forward slash independenceday.pdf. We're going to talk about this, and I'm going to let you go and enjoy your families. That's what we're about. I had somebody ask me, said, I've never seen a church that just doesn't have services going on through the week. I said, well, have you seen all the families we have at our church? We're doing things during the week. Why would I keep you here when you need to go home and implement the things that are being taught here? I don't want to see you that much. I love you, but I got things to do. Amen. So we want to make sure that we are recognizing the importance of this day, not for 1776, but because we as believers in this time need to maintain our independence from the world system. That's what I'm going to talk about. So. Let's go. So I want to first by, uh, I'm start by defining what independent, some definitions of the word independent, which is where is a derivative of the word independence. Uh, the adjective independent means, number one, free from outside control, not dependent on another's authority. The second one was not depending on another for livelihood or substance. Third, capable of thinking or acting for oneself. And four, not connected with another or with each other, separate, not depending on something else for strength or effectiveness and freestanding. I looked this word up and the, this is the definition of being a Christian. Yes, it is. Free from outside control, not depending on another's authority. Whose authority do we depend on? God. Now we honor other authorities. But we depend on what? God. God's authority. Big difference. Not depending on another for livelihood or substance. Same thing. We go to work, but we know that our boss doesn't have the power to take our money away. Yeah, because if we lose that job, guess who's going to get us another one? God. So our faith and confidence it's not in the world for livelihood or substance. It's in God. Number three, capable of thinking or acting for oneself. This is the big one. Because right now you have to think and act for yourself. Aside from what the media is trying to program you to think. They're telling you, I mean, they're, they're talking about a deadly virus that only exists in their mouths. Like, there's no footage of it. Like, they got you scared of large crowds. My sister, for the concert that we're doing on the 31st here, she put a flyer out or whatever to advertise it for her peop the people on her Facebook. Whatever. Facebook flagged it and put a COVID warning on it for large gatherings. I'm like, are we still doing this? Then another ministry sent me a, 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 a warning for them being extremist. Facebook is saying they're, they're, they're warning people of extremists on Facebook. Guess who the extremists are? Us. Don't you leave me out here by myself. You, you, you in here too. Okay, okay. 
We're the extremists. Why? Because we don't believe the lie. So we have to be, number three, capable of what? Thinking or acting for oneself. And then number four, not connected with another or with, with each other. Now this isn't talking about us as Christians. This is talking about not being, or I'm using it to be, uh, not be connected from the world. We are to be in the world, but not of the world. Be ye separate. Do not be unequally yoked. So the world, according to the Bible, represents sin and immoral, immoral practices. Those are the things that we disconnect from and be separate from. We don't depend on someone else for strength or effectiveness. We're freestanding because we depend on God for these things. Right? So when I saw this, it just jumped out at me. This is, this is Christian 101. This is who we're supposed to be. That's why during this end time testing period, many are falling away or falling astray because they can't attest to any of these things. They're not free from outside control. They watch the news constantly. You can't accidentally leave the news on anymore. In 10 minutes, you'll be scared. It's pure programming. So that's what I'm saying, y'all. We have to stay separate in our mentalities because the media will program, program us to do anything. And if you trust the media, that means you trust the ads that they're showing. Have you seen the advertisements? Donuts and ice cream all day. Hamburgers. None of that's good for you. You, you know that's not good for you, right? But that's what they're showing you. They're not showing you how to eat healthy. But I thank God we talk about this stuff. So when they, when they tell us that our immune system can't handle this or can't handle that, well, they don't even say immune system. When they make us afraid, we trust God for our own immune system. We believe that God has kept us this far. How many of you got grandparents that live 90? I mean, they were living and took nothing. I got a grandmother lived till she was like 79, and I know what, there was nothing else in her refrigerator but hog stuff. <laughs> hog parts. <laughs> the mall. <laughs> we used to be crying and get a whooping because you eat that mall. It said it's a mall. <laughs> they eat a hog mall. And she lived. So I know if I'm practicing good health habits, I'm exercising, I'm eating right, I'm, I'm not worried about what's out there. Amen? I'm breathing air. And it's going to be okay. All right, this will be quick. <laughs> when we choose Christ, we are choosing independence from the world. We are no longer of the world, but we are of the one that created it. Romans 12 and 2, and be not conformed to this world, but be ye what? Transformed by the what? Renewing of what? Your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. So be not conformed to what the world is doing. Let God transform your mind so you can have the freedom that I have. I get, that's the email I get more than anything from pastors. The freedom. Y'all are just so free at your church. It's the freedom, the freedom. That's because my mind has been transformed. I don't believe everything that the, that the world is telling me because I know the world is out to make a profit. So I'm going to listen to the one that created it. The fall of mankind changed the world into a selfish, sin-governed place. Instead of the creation glorifying God, it chose to glorify self and become a servant of Satan. So that's why things are bad because the devil is wilding out, right? First John 2 and 16, for all that is in the world, and this is God describing why we are not supposed to love the world or fall in love with the things of the world. All that is in the world is the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and what? Pride. The pride of life. Basically trying to prove something to someone. Pride of life. And it's not of the Father, but that is of the world. In Christ, we don't have to prove anything. We don't have to prove anything to anyone in Christ. Amen. The devil gave mankind a new perspective on his existence by doing what? Opening their eyes and giving them knowledge of 
evil, which they did not have before. So the issue was eating off the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, right? They already knew good, but they didn't know evil. So the devil knew if I can make them know evil, I can make them want to do evil. Genesis 3 and 5 tells us, for God, this is the devil telling the woman, for God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, then what's going to happen? Your eyes shall be what? Opened. So we know that, you know, in uh, mystic cultures or cultures that believe, uh, pagan cultures, they believe that this is the opening of the uh, pineal gland or the third eye, all of these different things so you can see into spiritual realms. Then your eyes shall be open and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. So this is where mankind messed up because when they ate of the fruit of the tree, which is another thing I talked about in the Pharmacos video about the importance of what we eat and how God actually even used that symbolically to represent uh, actually eating something and then having a life altering experience. But then your eyes shall be opened and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and Jesus came to create a new way to live. The new way is to live independently of the world's mindset. So you remember when you lived for the world. You just did whatever you felt like doing. Then when you lived for the Lord, you began to do what he felt like you should do. Does that make sense? So we changed our behavior when we came to Christ, right? Yeah, some of y'all, you know, <laughs> you was out there, and you can't be out there like that anymore in Christ, because he's given us a new way to live. Now, how are you going to know the new way to live if you don't know what his word says? That's the problem with the church now. Everyone is going off what man says instead of what the word says. To know Christ is to know his word, because in the beginning was the word, the word was with God, and the word what? was God, then the word came and dwelt among us as flesh. Yeah. That's Jesus Christ. So he is his word. So in order to know him, you have to know what his word says. Galatians 2 and 25. I am crucified. This is Paul talking. I'm crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ that liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live how? By the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. So my life, Paul is saying, I've died. I'm crucified with Christ. So what I wanted to do, who I wanted to be, is no more. My purpose is to do what Christ wants me to do. Christianity gives us all the ways of Christ and teaches us how to live in a world that does not honor him. Isn't it funny? Christ is the only one they target. They don't burn Korans in protest. They don't say anything bad about Buddha. They don't say anything about, bad about Krishna. They don't say anything bad about Kali. There's no, Jesus Christ is the only one they have a problem with. I wonder why. Do you wonder why? Why do they only have a problem with the Son of God? But they hate him. They do not honor him. Our morals are not their morals. Your morals are not the world's morals. And I don't mean you go on your job, all the homosexuals line up. <laughs> you make minimum wage. Get some words, sit down and shut up. <laughs> That's not what it means. <laughs> no, no, that is, that's not what it means. And you don't have to wear the shirt. <laughs> that's not how we function. But if one of them comes to you and wants maybe some help and asks you some questions, I'm not going to lie. Amen. Now, if my, wait, let me wait before, stop the clapping. Now, if your boss asks you questions, the first thing I would want to know is, what does this have to do with the job you hired me for? That's my first question. So don't go to preaching to him. Oh, I was waiting on that. See? 
that lifestyle you practice it as he pulling the, the slip out all while you talking. It's your last day. You know, don't do that. There's a way to handle everything. And I tell people when they ask me these questions or whatever, I tell them, I said, man, the Bible said we have to be wise as serpents, but harmless as doves. So there is a way to handle everything. Jesus didn't even go head on with people when they asked him questions. He would talk around the question and throw the question right back on them. That, that was Jesus. So I'm, not, I'm, I'm telling you, you, you can tell the truth, but there's a way you can present truth. And you might keep your job. <laughs> Don't call me. Oh, see, I did it just like you. No. <laughs> I still have my job. <laughs> you didn't do it like I did. <laughs> But there's a way. I mean, you know, we have a lot of young people in this. So I want y'all to understand that. There's a way you present certain things. But I always ask, like, now, is, does this have something to do with my employment here? Like, what kind of questions are these? Well, we want to just know how you feel. I didn't think feelings had anything to do with me shoveling snow. Man, I'm making french fries. Why do you worry how I feel? Ask me if I'm hot. This fry is up to like 400. Ask me about that. These working conditions. <laughs> Don't ask me how I feel about someone that's working here. <laughs> but our morals, our morals aren't the world's morals. Right? Our desires should not be the same as the world's desires. If we're in Christ. Our desires are God's desires. John 15 and 19 says, if you were of the world, the world would love his own. But because you are not what? You are not what? Of the world. But I have chosen you out of the world. Therefore, the world what? The world hates you. On earth, we must live independently from the cloud or hive mind ideology that is permeating our world's mindsets. Everyone plugged into the same belief system. That's what, you know, most of the people that are disagreeing with you on Facebook are, are bots. It's not even real people. But they're put on there. They're algorithms that read what you say and respond to lure everyone in and push everyone to us to the same mindset, same consciousness, the hive mind, so that everyone will believe the same thing. Man, because if you say something that disagrees with mainstream, man, you get attacked, don't you? Yeah. You're going to get all kinds of attention if you go against the grain. It's because they've programmed. That's why they want everyone with a smartphone and they want everyone online because it's easier to push everyone to the same belief system that way. And that's what the New World Order has been planning for years. Y'all, I've been preaching about this for many, many years. I did a whole sermon, I think, a whole message on the hive mind. The New World Order's whole plight is to make us all of one mind and cause us to accept the agenda of the beast in exchange for normalcy and freedoms. So they want you to exchange your freedoms and do it so that you can go back to what you thought was normal. Yeah. By accepting the agenda that they have. That's what it's all about. That's what it's all about. I have a patent that was sent to me, and it's a patent, it's a patent where they have patented the ability to alter your nervous system through electromagnetics. Yeah, and it's funny how metal objects are sticking to the Vac spot, there are electromagnetics in there. And this patent was done 10 years ago for the technology. I have the patent. So they were already planning to control nervous systems? Like a computer program, really? Like you can type something and make my nervous system react? Revelations 13 and six says in the Bible, Y'all know the Bible's been on top of all of this. 
It says that he, speaking of the Antichrist, is going to cause all both small and great, rich and poor, free of bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads. This is going to be what is going to show their allegiance to the system, whatever it is. Now, y'all know my take. I, I mean, I'll keep saying it. Y'all can keep watching YouTube videos of other folks telling you that this vax and all that stuff is the market. I, it's, just, it's, not the wrist and it's not the right hand or the forehead. I just don't believe that. But I do believe they are working out a way to control people to cause them to do what they want them to do. If they're seeking, if they're seeking out extremists on Facebook, then you better know they have a way to deal with extremists. You know how they're going to deal with extremists? They just told you. They're seeking out people to deal with them. They're asking people, do you know extremists? This is how you handle an extremist. So they're going to use people to attack people. So if they can plug the right frequencies in them, can alter their behavior and their nervous system, they can make them lash out at those that don't agree. Yeah, Hitler tried to do that for years. Can I keep going? This is a 4th of July message, I promise you it is. Somebody's like, man, I just, I'm not feeling fireworks right now. <laughs> Ever since the Garden Incident, man has been trying to unite all to war against God's will for us. Ever since the garden. With the emergence of computers, internet, social media, and biotechnologies, they can finally cause all to join together and worship the beast system and push the New World Order agenda into mankind. So all they needed was phones, technology, you know, the light spectrum. I preach about the light spectrum way back. Y'all remember that part eight? And I showed you how different beings teach them how to tap into different frequencies all on the light. Because all matter responds to frequency. So how, all, how it was all going to go down in the end times, it was going to be all frequency related. Because what was Lucifer? The Bible describes him, describes him as a being that did what? He did, what did he produce? Sound. What is sound? Frequency. And sound in, uh, octaves up becomes what? Light. Light is set to frequency. All these lights in here, we got 5,000K, we've got 3,000K, they call it daylight. Uh, the evening light, the, just depending on what the frequency is, but all light is frequency. And he was a light being. The son of the morning. And so he's going to use what God gave him, or what God built into him. He's going to use his knowledge of the light spectrum to cause all to do this. Frequencies. So they need our bodies to be antennas that act as conductors for frequencies. With the emergence of all of these things, they finally have it set up. Daniel 12 and 4 says, But thou, O Daniel, shut up the words, seal the book, even to the time of the end. Y'all believe we're in the time of the end? I do. Many shall begin to do what in the end times? Run to and fro, getting information, and knowledge shall be what? Increased. Like, I can't stand these new kids, man. You can't teach them nothing. They know everything. I mean, not all the kids. I love them. I'm just saying. The whole mentality. I got to watch how I say stuff. Somebody might be recording me. But, yeah, they just think they know everything. You try to correct them. I know. I know. You know, not in my house. You know, that's, that's still, in 2021, a beatdown. Even if I'm wrong. <laughs> you gonna get somebody else to tell you. I'm just kidding. But, <laughs> but yeah, everyone thinks they know everything. 
These kids, they think they know everything. And it's so crazy, you know, when you try to talk to them about the Lord, our God, oh, yeah, well, you know, the Bible is the white man's book. And, you know, we don't, we don't believe that, you know. We just, I said, oh, well, well, what do you believe? You know, I mean, it's all about the chakras. It's all about, you know, the, the, the this. And I said, oh, okay, so you don't believe the Bible? Yeah, that's just a book. It's just a book of words, you know. So I said, well, the book about what you said is a book of words? I mean, but the Bible was just a man-made book written by man. <laughs> but they just do what they want to do. Knowledge has increased to that level now where everyone is as, feels they're smart or feels they know. So it's harder for us to even spread the gospel now because people second guess everything. The Bible said in Daniel 12 and 4 that this time of the end would come. People would be running to and for. That's basically just on YouTube watching videos and then and it's, it, it becoming doctrine to them. Flat earth, that's a doctrine to people. And let me warn you, never argue with a flat earther. <laughs> never. Like, never. Never. If anybody mentions it, you just make up something else and start talking about something else. Because you can't win the argument. You can't win their argument because, like, you can't leave the earth and prove... <laughs> You can't take them up there. That's the only way to convince them. You would have to take them out of this. <laughs> and you can't. So there's no, they have something for everything. Like, well, what about the moon and the shadow of the earth of the moon? They have one for that. Well, see, it's because of the way it turns. <laughs> like, you are Copernicus. I, I can't argue with you. You're smarter than him. They just become Isaac Newton all of a sudden. So don't watch videos. You will get caught into it and then you'll start thinking, huh. So if you just look, you can see it. Just look at the horizon. It's flat. It is flat. And if I can't walk until I can't walk anymore. I'll hit an iceberg to protect me from falling off. I get about 20 messages a week. Brother, your messages are good. God is using you. Oh, he's using you. Oh, mm. But that's just this one thing. You got to bring out the truth about the flatter. And what does it matter? What does it matter? Now, if you're taking a very long journey and you're afraid you might hit something, I understand. Then I'd be reading books. <laughs> Let me keep going. <laughs> but, man, you don't even go anywhere. You don't even have a car. You're worried about the earth. <laughs> I'm sure there are more pressing issues going on in your life. Has to be. As believers, we are not of this world, but we are slaves to the will of our Lord and Savior. Anybody got a problem being a slave to the will of the Lord? We do not accept Christ to stay tethered to his enemies. <laughs> no, nope. we accept him to forsake the new world order and the mindset of those controlled by it. 1 John 2 and 15. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man falls in love with the world or this new world order, the love of the Father is what? Not in him. I can't let you redesign God's creation. I can't let you turn a man into a woman and expect me to believe that's what you did. I still see. <laughs> I can't do it. I'm not going to let you make me do that. 
Now you can you go do that over there. But you're not gonna do that with me. Have me questioning what I'm seeing. What? what? <laughs> no, if it's either a man or it's a woman. God made them that way. And he didn't make human 2.0, so I don't need you putting nanoparticles in me. All of those things are abominable because God created me, and when he created man, he said, it's good. That means it's complete. So I don't need, I don't need an upgrade. So I'm not going for any of this stuff. I don't love the world that much. I, I love the Father. Amen? Amen? Yeah. Even though we are in the world and must handle the affairs of business, family, and even evangelism to the world, we are not of this world. We are not of the world. That's why you feel so different when you talk like we're talking right now. It's, it's fine in here. You just say, amen. Oh, yeah, amen. But then when you go out in the real world, and the guy walks in, and you're like, hey, how you doing, Sam? Oh, I'm Samantha now. Like, no, you're not. You still look like Sam. Don't judge me. So you know what I'm going to do next. I'm walking around being vaccinated. Mm. I'm vaccinated. But you didn't take the shot. I don't have to. I just, right now I am. So let, so let me in this football game. <laughs> I identify as vaccinated. I, I don't, hey, hey, man, you can just make up whatever you want. People walking around, hey, I'm a horse. No, you're not. Yes, I am. Whoa. <laughs> if you can be a horse, I can be vaccinated. Be vaccinated. Man, people. <laughs> so, <laughs> I'm not accepting the agenda. Y'all, this world is crazy. Did y'all see? I have a video of a lady that went to a spa. Y'all saw that? She went to a spa where the women were in like the, the, the pool or the hot tub area. Naked dude just walked in, sat down in the water. Young teenage girls, everything in there. So the lady jumped up, went to the front desk. She was like, it's a dude in the water. Buck. Naked. <laughs> Soaking wet. He just sitting in the water. And the guy was like, I mean, you can't, you can't do anything about it. This is in California, of course. You can't do anything about it? Well, no, I mean, he, he's, he's a woman. And so she started describing him. She said, no, wait a minute. I saw stuff in the water. That, that's, that's, that's parts, that's stuff in the water. Like, like Austin Powers, it's a mad baby. It's a mad baby. That ain't no woman. <laughs> so she went on and you know, she, she started using the street words to describe what she was saying. <laughs> Take the kids out of here, we need to talk. And he just sat there. He wouldn't even look up at it. He just kept saying it. But if, if, if he identifies as a woman, that's the new world order. That's what they want to do. But what they're really doing is mocking God's perfect creation. How do you get back at a creator? You mess up what he's created. So the devil knows that's his trump card. And when I want to get back at God, I do it through his precious creation. Galatians 1 and 4. Who gave himself for our sins that he might deliver us from this present evil world. That doesn't mean just take us out of here, which he's going to do. But even while we're here, he delivers us mentally, emotionally from this world. 
That's why you, look at somebody say, that's why you have peace. You go home to visit people or whatever, they just, oh, they all mask up, three, four masks on their face. They just, oh, no, 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 don't get too close now. Hey, hey, I know I'm seeing you in 10 years, but then I stay back there. And you're just like, what is going on? But you're delivered. Your mentality, you are delivered because you believe greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. You believe that any ailment that could come on my body, God created my body. I'm not even controlled in that kind of control of my body. God is. He's my protector. So as long as I put the right things in it, he's going to protect me. I don't walk in fear when I know the one who created me. But he gave himself to deliver us from this present evil world according to the will of God and our Father. As Christians, we are physically in the world, but spiritually, we are in Christ Jesus. What Jesus did on Calvary bought our independence so we can live for him against the collective consciousness and strong delusion of our world. He said he would send strong delusion so the people might believe what? A lie. God was going to allow people to believe the lie instead of the truth. But that's not me. That's not you. That's not us. We're not a part of that collective consciousness and strong delusion of the world. We're independent of it because of what he did for us. Romans 8 and 9. But ye are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If so be that the Spirit of God dwells in you. So if you've given your life to the Lord and the Spirit of God dwells in you, you may look like a flesh body, but you're really a godly spiritual being. That means we look at things differently. Yeah. People bring us bad news. We pray for good news. That's different. I'm not getting depressed and down because you gave me bad news. I'm going to pray that things get better because I'm different. The spirit dwells in me. Summary. Our country celebrates Independence Day because of what happened in 1776, right? But we as believers should celebrate what Jesus did 2,000 years ago on Calvary. That's the real Independence Day. God foreknew where the world was heading. He knew that knowledge of evil would propel men into trying to be a God like him. That's all the billionaire elites are trying to be. They're trying to be God-like beings. You know, you can have so much money, and my uncle used to always tell me, what does a man that has everything want? More. So at that level, they want to not only own everything, they want to own people. Control people. Control food, farmland, what is grown, what is sold, what is bought, what we eat, everything, what we see, everything. So God knew that the world was going to get this way. He knew that knowledge of evil would propel men into trying to be God, be a God like him. He knew that the devil would create and promote the knowledge of evil through humans to fight against God and his kingdom. The devil's doing that. During Noah's time, y'all have heard me preach this many times before, but during Noah's time, the devil found a way to immortalize evil beings by mixing the DNA of man with matter from beings of other realms. Right? That's Genesis 6. This created the giants of Genesis 6 and perverted mankind to the point of God destroying them and starting over with Noah's pure bloodline. But the spirits of these beings lived on. So even though the flood drowned, it, drowned the bodies, the spirits still lived on and continue to wander the earth doing the devil's bidding. We know that because after the flood, we see another ordeal where this time mankind tries to defy the barrier between realms and build a structure to thrust man into the heavens or into other realms. The Tower of Babel. God stopped the unification of mankind by confusing their languages so they could not complete this endeavor. But God 
did state that if man comes together in one mind, they would be able to accomplish this. God confused their languages because it wasn't time for the world to end. He had just remade it. So God said, nope, I'm not going to let y'all do this. And he confused their languages. They, all, they didn't understand each other. Today, man has taken up the task to complete what was started in Genesis 6 and Genesis 11. That's all you're seeing. When you turn on the news, that's all you're seeing. What happened in Genesis 6 and what happened in Genesis 11. They are merging the DNA of man with synthetic nanoparticles to create a new species of human. Just like they did in Genesis 6. They are attempting to change the mind of man so they will all believe and follow the same narrative. By altering human beings, they can finally cause all to believe the same thing and unify for the same goals. Now to Genesis 11, they have rebuilt the tower design of Babel, but this time it's underground instead of above. It's CERN. CERN is able to puncture realm barriers and act as a gateway for sentient beings to pass through. So they pull beings through, through CERN, they get the knowledge of other realms, and they inject it in humans. This is how man gained the technology that they are now injecting into people. The hive mind and collective consciousness of 2021 is coming together right before our eyes. They are using racism, politics, and fear as a distraction from what is really happening behind the scenes. The billionaire leader bringing all minds together to war against God. But instead of using a flood or confusing languages, Jesus Christ is going to appear to war against mankind personally. <laughs> Ask me how I know. Because the Bible said he would. Yeah. Yeah, they're doing exactly what they did before. But it won't be a flood this time. According to the Bible, he will destroy all of his enemies and reign forever. Anybody going to reign with him? But, I have to say that real loud. But, before he does, he is going to rescue all of those that have lived against the world's agenda. <laughs> those of us that kept the faith and continued in his ways will be saved. So we must continue to celebrate our independence from the world and rejoice for our day of redemption draws nigh. Praise be to God for all of his promises. Amen. Finally, this passage right here describes exactly what I've been talking about. Revelation 17 and 13. These, speaking of uh, those that are against Christ, these have one mind. That's what all of this is about, having one mind. Anyone that has a different mind, you're a target, you're an enemy. But it's about everyone believing the same thing, one mind. The Bible said these have one mind and shall give their power and strength to who? To the beast. Their power, their strength, their allegiance to the beast. Because the beast is going to convince and has convinced them that the system is their savior. The beast is where your faith is. Your faith is either in God or in the beast. I'm trusting in God. Amen. Oh, but this is where we are. I used to read these passages 10, 15, 20 years ago. And it wasn't clear. Like it is now. It's very clear now what they're going to do. The Bible even says that the beast deceived them all with his sorceries. What is sorcery? Pharmacos. Pharmakia. That's the word for sorcery. Pharmaceuticals. How do you control people? Do you go up to them and shake some bones? And you think that's what makes them fall out? No. No. Before they ever do the shaking of the bones, they have to drink something or eat something. Yeah. 
You know, when you eat a honey bun and drink a Tahitian treat, you wild it out. You out of control. Can't nobody stop. You just dumb right there. You gotta wait till it wear off. Don't ask me no serious questions right now. But this sugar, this sugar got me. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Had a couple of donuts, you crazy. You hang up the phone and like, man, I know I shouldn't have said that. What happened? It was donuts. Yeah, sorcery. It's what you put in your body. Put some bad gas in your car and see what happened. It'll be Putin and oh, pop it. Because it's only going to run on the, as good as the fuel you put in it. So if you eating crazy, you're going to be crazy. Well, it's the same thing with pharmaceuticals. All of these things, they're sorceries. They're changing people's minds. They're altering people's behavior. The Bible said they would have one mind and shall give their power and strength unto the beast. Then Revelation 17 and 14, and I'm closing. These shall make war with the lamb. Who is the lamb? Jesus Christ. And the lamb shall what? <laughs> you can't beat Jesus. Are you kidding me? The lamb is going to overcome them. For he is the Lord of lords and the king of kings. And here's the good part. And they that are what? They that are, how many of you with him? Stand up if you're with him. They that are what? With him are what? Called and chosen and faithful. I know I'm with him. So no matter how bad things look, no matter how bad things are, no matter how bad things, how many variants they tell you are waiting outside for you. We serve the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. <laughs> so I'm not giving power and strength to the beast. I'm not giving him my confidence in my life. I'm not using him as the antidote for my health. <laughs> I'm not giving him power and strength. I serve Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Everyone just bow your heads. I'm going to pray just a corporate prayer for everyone. I'm not going to even call anyone up for this prayer because I want everyone to partake in it, including myself. But just because of all that is going on, all that we're seeing, all that we're hearing, all the programming, all of these things that I talked about, this can be overwhelming. I know these sermons and different things, but I want you to keep the faith. I want you to keep the faith, and I'm going to pray right now that you keep the faith. That you keep your faith in the one that can save your soul from all the things that are going on. All the things that are happening. You keep your faith in the right place. In the Lord of Lords and King of Kings. Because we that are with him, I'm with him. And if you are in Christ, you are with him. So when he comes to settle this matter, you'll be with him. So everyone bow your heads. Father God, I just thank you, Lord, for this message. I thank you for this Independence Day. God, even though it is a celebration that our country does or whatever, I thank you, God, that for a period we did have freedoms. And even now we do have freedoms that others don't have, that others can't enjoy. So I thank you for those freedoms, God. I even thank you for just the state of Texas where our governor is bolder than most and he stood up and he's allowed us to be to have different things, God. I believe it had a lot to do with the prayers of the Adam and Believers Council when we were fasting and praying. And even though we didn't know what was getting ready to happen, we knew something was going to happen. So you called us to that period of fasting and praying three days each week. And so, God, I just believe that we are reaping the benefits of many of those prayers. But we want to stay steadfast and trusting in you for the things to come. Believe in that you will be our deliverance. Believe in God that you will be our healer in this time. Believe in that you are all powerful and when you return, we will be with you. So I pray right now for every believer in this place. Come on, lift your hands up. 
Every believer in this place, lift your hands up if you're a believer. Every believer in this place that believes in the truth that was spoken, that believes that you are the way, the truth, and the light, that, has, that holds you in that regard in their lives as Lord of Lords. God, I pray that their faith not fail them during this time. I pray that they will not buy into strong delusion. I pray, Father God, that they will not buy into the new world order. I pray that you will give them the faith they need in this last hour to stand strong on what you have called them to do and who you have called them to be. And I pray against every trap that the enemy may be setting up, even though I, I made light of some of it on their jobs and different things, but a lot of these things are just traps to hinder them. I pray, God, that you would give them divine insight to be able to steer around, just like you did when you were approached by the scribes, the Pharisees, the Sadducees. You were able to steer through their questions and, and, and see their motives. I pray that you would give that same discernment to everyone in here, God, that they would be able to wade through the waves and the storms of this time God, and continue to do the things that you've called them to do. Bless every home. Bless every man. Bless every woman. Bless every child in this place with faith for this last hour. And God, we're going to trust and continue to believe you for these things as we stand in this last day. In Jesus' name. And God, uh, let everyone have safe Holiday fun, God, no accidents, no incidents, Father God, but keep us all safe as we celebrate uh, this day uh, in our humanness, Father God, and we'll give you the glory and the honor for all you've given us, just even the ability to celebrate. We thank you for all things, God. In Jesus' name, we pray these things. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Come on, Elder.